This is KBYP with a video on the correct way to make a correct dipole. <coughs> Unfortunately, there's a lot of BS and smoke blown by very dishonest people in amateur radio today that want to blow smoke up your behinds about all center feds and end feds and all this junk. <coughs> For which you have to buy things. You gotta buy a ballon or an una or ferrite clamps or other magical garbage in order to make it work and I'm here to show you that's not necessary. And worse, it'll work poorly with it. This is a 20 meter dipole, like my 40 meter dipole, plastic conduit T at the feed point and two pieces of wire and some coax. That's it. This antenna absolutely embarrasses operators with Yagi's and amplifiers. This is the one I work into Europe easily with a watt. What is necessary to build a proper dipole is found in two books. The first one is Radio Engineer's Handbook by Terman, available online. That's a comprehensive digest of the entirety of electrical physics and radio and also Radio Antenna Engineering by Laporte, who is the chief engineer for RCA. Not clowns at ARL in this for the money, but real masters of the topic. It doesn't get any higher than these people. And these were these are legacy sources from the 40s and 50s, but physics had not changed. What you will find in those books is the requirements to build a proper dipole. The factors that matter are wire diameter, the height of the wires, particularly at the feed point, hello dragonfly, at the feed point above ground, ground is the earth, the length of the arms, and whether the arms are straight. Having those arms tilted, and there's, there's some bow in these, but it's minor. Having those arms tilted is absolutely death to dipole tuning. It will induce reactants and kill the bandwidth. And I tested that on this antenna with the VNA. I saw it happen. Contrary to the BS artists that claim the arms can be bent, they cannot. Because a tuning will go right down the toilet. It's possible to bend the ends of the arms, but for 20 meters, it's unlikely anyone has a lot so small that they can't stretch out 32 feet of wire. If you do, you're living in an apartment or on a postage stamp. The first and most obvious requirement is arm length. For a 40 meter dipole, the wavelength at the speed of light is 40 meters long. Convert that to feet. Divide it by four. That's the length of each arm. That will, in practice, be the incorrect length. Because what's happening is that these arms are transmission lines and electromagnetic fields are traveling along them. And the fields are slowed down by the factor traveling through air. And the correction factor I've measured is 0 0.951. So the arms have to be shortened by that factor from their length at the whatever number of meters the frequency corresponds to. I think it's shortened. This dipole was cut to precise length the first time from such a formula. And it is tuned precisely. There has been no trimming whatsoever on that antenna. Also on my 80 meter dipole that's six feet up. Cut to exact length, no more cutting. The second and third factors are wire diameter and height those arms are transmission lines against the ground. They're traveling electromagnetic fields. Those are transmission lines. The diameter and the height is, are, are what control the feed point resistive value. It isn't resistance. If it was, it would consume the power, but it appears to be resistance electrically to feed point. Resistive means there's no so-called reactance, no phase shifting. This 20 meter dipole measured once I pulled the arms straight and didn't let them sag down like the ordinary dipole. 
This antenna measures about a one ohm change in complex impedance across the entire 20 meter band. It is absolutely staggering. But I saw it on a VNA. I've proven it in the ham shack. It's perfect. A one ohm change won't even show up on the SWR meter. The height of the antenna above so-called ground is what controls the value. And that's what controls the type of transmission line. For this antenna, it's fed with 75 ohm, very low loss, very high velocity commercial CATV coax. I started with, I have a thousand foot spool of that and I got for free. So I started by assuming this 75 ohm line and slowly raising this antenna until the P point was on the VNA, oh, something like 73 ohms, which there'll be some error. But the main thing was that it was almost purely resistive. Keep the arms straight, keep them as much the same height all the way out as possible. Connect the transmission line up. It's best to put an analyzer or an SWR meter sensing unit at the feed point and raise the antenna uniformly until it reads the same as the characteristic of the line. And that is perfect tuning. And it makes a staggering difference. No balance, no unans. Those are all foolish waste of time and money to try to compensate for the gross mistake of building a so-called 50 ohm antenna and being foolish enough to try to drive it with 450 ohm line. It is an absolute waste of time. You will get nowhere with it. And you'll find that you can't get out of your own backyard without an amplifier. And back in Hamshack where it's quite a bit cooler and not as bright. The, these dipoles are, are mainly what I use. There, I don't think there's $150 in all of them, both of them, well, including the 80 meter. Balance and ooms are transformers. There is nothing a dipole or an antenna needs a balance or unum for because balance stands for balanced to unbalanced transmission line and UNAN stands for unbalanced to unbalanced transmission line, and they're both for transmission line coupling, not for antennas. Hams make the mistake of falling for this because they've made the horrifying initial mistake of using twin lead. Throw the twin lead in the garbage can. It's a relic from the days where transmitters had a high resistance output of several hundred ohms with a a link coupled output that it can be set to pretty much wherever you want it. <coughs> then maybe put a transformer out there, but see that was decades ago. That went out the window when coax showed up. But I sit here regularly on these dipoles and absolutely obliterate stations with Yagi's and amplifiers because their systems are grossly out of tune and they make the mistake of falling for the myth of multi-band antennas and that doesn't exist in amateur radio. It exists in engineering with the caveat that any antenna can have multiple tunings but they are extremely inefficient beyond two tunings. So hams do not have the knowledge to do that. Got the dehumidifier running because I've cleaned the ham shack. <laughs> place is getting pretty messy. But I, I so regularly work Europe with a lot on CW. It's getting boring. And before the conditions went down the toilet last couple months, I was in the process of going to a half watt on CW. They shouldn't be able to hear me in the next state over with one watt, let alone half, let alone 50. But I do it regularly building a proper dipole and getting it tuned exactly resistive makes a far bigger difference than you can comprehend. I didn't believe it. But there's a log book full of contacts that prove it. So, read those two books. Find the information on the effect of antenna height. That's in Radio Engineer's Handbook. And wire diameter. And understand that the 
length of the arm is based on a velocity of propagation of the energy through air, which I calculate to be 0.951. That determines the length, and that gives you something to start with instead of guessing and more guessing, because we get in the way with such complicated things by guessing. When you get it right, you will sit there in amazement at what a big difference it makes. So go build something, have fun. Um, a story, I was here one day on the 40, 80 meter dipole set on 80. There was some poor fool on 75 meters playing running stations, the running stations game, pretending like he was a contester or a DX or he was running stations. Oh, five nine. my equipment is boasting about his off-center fed and his 600 watt amplifier in Powell, Tennessee. I could throw a rock a couple of wavelengths and probably hit his house. He played this nonsense for about 15 minutes on the air, boasting to people about his big signal and his off-center fed and his, I think it was an SB201 at 600 watts. So, after a little while, things slowed down. I called. His signal was about 20 over. He did not give me a signal report. Twice. I finally had to ask him, what's my signal? And as I recall, it was S9 or 5 over or something like that. And my response was, that's interesting since I'm only running 7 watts. Did he stay in amazement? Oh, wow, how'd you do that? Could I, could I learn how to do that? Could you explain your antenna? No. He gave his call sign and disappeared. Absolutely humiliated. Because there were probably 75 people listening at that point. Believe me, folks, when I get on the air, the world knows it. They know Kate BYP. Because I absolutely cream their amplifiers on a daily basis. In the five years I've been doing this, there has been one ham. I can count them on one finger, one ham, that has in earnest wanted to know something about how I did that. And that was on six meters, which I was using a dipole, 40 meter dipole. It ain't great, but it works. One. Now you would think if I'm barnstorming Europe with a watt, with a dipole, somebody would be awfully curious about how I did that. No. It isn't happening. Houston, we have a problem. We have an extreme problem. And it is what is destroying amateur radio, and it's ignorance and apathy. And this con game by ARL, that you memorize some answers and get a piece of paper, and that makes you a ham. And I can assure you, quite possibly having been in this before your mother was born, that you are not. You are a licensee when you memorize some answers and get a license, but you can't even spell ham radio yet. You'll need 10 to 20 years of earnest study to become a ham. If you ever do, and I encourage it highly, you will find this an absolutely fascinating I, I can't say hobby because Greg will jump all over me because it's not a hobby. A absolutely fascinating pursuit and there is no end to things you can study and work with. But that will not happen with a no-code license because that is nothing but baiting you into being a consumer. That's just baiting you into not ham radio but bot radio. I bought a radio, I bought an amplifier, I bought a tuner, and I bought an antenna, and that is CB radio, folks. That's not ham. So, take this information, go build a real dipole, tune it exactly, and then go play with it. And you will sit there in amazement at how well it works and how wrong the information is that is out there. KBYP out.